Assalamu alaikum. Hello everybody. Today we're going to explain some of the most important words in Islam terminology. Our words today are related to Islam itself and how to become Muslim and believing and disbelieving. And we will start this words with the most commonly used word in Islam which is Allah. Allah is a word which is not translated, it's written in all languages as it is, it's called Allah. Allah is the Muslim's God. Every religion has its own God, but the Islamic religion, its God is Allah. And when we say Allah, we generally as Muslims follow this by two words, Subhanahu wa ta'ala or Jalla wa ala. These two words you will always find in accompanying the word Allah most of the time. Allah, according to the Arabic language, is very irregular word because this alif and lam at the beginning of this word cannot be removed, like any other word in Arabic. All the other words in Arabic can you can remove the alif and lam from the word, but in this word you cannot. It's like this. Plus, the sound of lamb in this word is somehow powerful, not soft, it's hard, it's not la but la. Allah, as he described himself in the Holy Quran, he said, Laysa kamithlihi shay'un wa huwa samiyahul basir. Which means that Allah has nothing to be compared to, nothing to be similar to. And he is the all listener, the all seer, the all observer. And we as Muslim cannot compare anything to Allah. Our belief in Allah is very wide. It contains lots of rules that we have to stick to and abide to. For example, as Muslims, we're not allowed to think how Allah looks like. As we said in ayah, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ Nothing is to be compared to Him. Allah is above everything. Allah is in the higher sky. Because He said about Himself. Allah has no partners whatsoever. Allah has no son. Allah wasn't created. Allah doesn't procreate. Allah is one and the only and the sustained. Allah has many names in Arabic and in Islam. More than 100 names. He only specializes himself with these names. No one can share these names with him in the same adjectives and properties he put in for himself. But, to be honest, some people can share it in the human level. For example, I'm not, will not talk too much, just for example, Allah is the most generous. His name is al Karim. But in real life, we have some people who are Karim. We call him, Karim means generous. But this generosity has no comparison to Allah's generosity. Allah gives us some properties from himself, but it is not the same. That takes us to the second word today. Our coming word is Qur'an. Qur'an. The Holy Qur'an is the third descendant book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the old for the Jewish and the new one for the Christian, and then we have Qur'an is the last passage from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the human being. And Qur'an, for us as Muslims, it's the words of Allah who has descended these words to his Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to give it to us to spread the message of Islam. And we will, inshallah, explain many words that is related to Qur'an sooner insha'Allah and all the details in Qur'an. The coming word is Muhammad. 
which we mentioned while explaining Quran. Muhammad is number one common word in the world. And Muhammad is the name of the Prophet and the last messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we said, when we explain the meaning of Allah, and we said that usually we say subhanahu wa ta'ala or jalla wa ala, as like we accompany Allah with a word most of the time to praise it, we as Muslims, when we mention the name of our Prophet Muhammad, we usually say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and that means peace be upon him and we are required as Muslim whenever to hear the name of the Prophet Muhammad to say that to give a brief introduction about our Prophet which inshallah we're going to make many series about him Muhammad peace be upon him was orphan his dad died before he was born and his mom died when he was at the age of uh, six years and then he was raised under the supervision of his uncle Abu Talib which was a disbeliever means kafir and then he worked in trading and then he married Khadija at the age of 25 while she was 40 years then after some while his wife his beloved wife died and his uncle died and he became alone and that looked like a message from Allah to tell him that people themselves will leave you and they will die and no one will stay with you and protect you and keep you ever protected except of me. Allah is trying to tell him that. The coming word is very famous. It's called Iman. Iman. Iman literally and translated into English means faith. But Iman according to the Islamic terminology and according to hadith coming from Prophet Muhammad which we will explain now inshallah when Gabriel asked Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what's Iman our Prophet told him Iman is number one to believe in Allah his angels his books his messengers وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ The hereafter and وَالْقَدَرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّ حُلْوِهِ وَمُرِّ and to believe in fate whatever it was good or bad and it was harmful or it was safe that takes us to the coming word مُؤْمِن مُؤْمِن is the person who abide to إيمان so if I am taking إيمان inside myself I'm called Mu'min and the person who is Mu'min is higher than the person who is Muslim okay what's Muslim 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 is the person who abide to Islam or is the person who believes in Allah and takes Islam as his faith and as his belief okay what's Islam Islam is the last messenger of Allah. Literally, this word means submission. It's to surrender and submit to Allah's will. And has nothing to do from your own, but just to accept whatever Allah gives you. But Islam, according to the Islamic terminology, means is to become Muslim. Okay, we say, how do I become Muslim? When I become Muslim, I should say, Shihada. Islam is defined according to another hadith when Rasulullah or Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Buniya al-Islamu ala khams The Islam is established upon five pillars or five anchors five main points that's the meaning One Shihada to an la ilaha illallah The first thing is to make shihada which is another word Shihada. Shihada means to say Ashadu anna la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. I bear witness that there is no God to be worshipped except of Allah. And I bear witness that is Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So number one, to make shahada. Number two, iqam salah to establish the prayer, as salah which we explained. And salah means the connection between someone to Allah. It's a set of movement. Muslim, human, do it every day, five times a day, and sometimes it exceeds than that, with a certain saying to be said, and a certain movement to be done. Of course, that is a must. Number three, ita is zakah, which is a new word for us today, zakah. A zakah is a word which is not exactly in English because this action is not in English, but it's translated according to the language as charity. But it's way bigger than that. What is a zakah? A zakah is an amount of money is taking from the Muslims money fourth of a tenth so for example if you have one thousand pound how much is the care from this thousand pound you divide into ten so it will be one hundred then divide one hundred into four so it will be twenty five so as the care for one thousand pound is twenty five pound this twenty five pound is taken from the Muslims money and given to the poor people and it's a must which means any Muslim person who doesn't take this money and give it to the people who Allah had told us where to give from poor people and different categories is making something very bad and maybe he will not be clear Muslim. Number four, Saum Ramadan, which means as Saum, that's another word. As Saum, it means fasting, to fast. But in Islam, it's different. A Psalm in Islam, which is Psalm Ramadan, Ramadan is a month of the Hijri year. This is the ninth month of the Hijri calendar. Okay. In this month, Muslims all over the world stop eating and drinking and having intercourse with their wives from Fajr till the sundown or al-maghrib they don't do any of these actions they do everything else except of these things except of they don't eat at all they don't drink at all they don't have any relations with their wives or their husbands of course that's called Salam Ramadan and we can explain this in details later inshallah and the fifth core of Islam is Hajjul Bayt to go to Saudi Arabia to make Hajj. And Hajj is what you see in the last month, actually exactly in the 10th, in the first to 10th day of the last month of the Hijri calendar, when people travel to Saudi Arabia and go around Kaaba to do some Islamic ceremonies. And this must be done in your life at least once if you have the ability to do it. That's called Hajj. So now we went from Islam to do these five things, this is the definition of Islam, and we took five other words. Okay, another very important word is Kafir. Kafir. According to the Arabic linguistic rules, Kafir is the person who covers, covers something. So, in some ayahs in Quran, the farmers are called kafir, but this is not the meaning we need here today. Because they put the seed in the soil and they cover it with soil and then they wait until it rises. That's called kafir. But this is according to the language. According to the Islamic terminology, kafir, who does not believe in Islam or Iman. But let's say Islam, because Islam is a lower degree of Iman. Iman is at the top, at the top of Islam. And above Iman there is something called Ihsan. But let's not discuss these things. You are required to know the meaning of Islam. Okay, if a person doesn't believe in Islam, doesn't want to become Muslim, this person is called Kafir, disbeliever. And anyone who doesn't believe in Islam, his end will go to the fire and that takes us 
to another word. A noun. Or it has different meaning like Jahannam, like Sa'ir. But the most important one, Annar. Annar in Arabic, literally translated to English, means fire. But the more accurate meaning is the hell, which you're going to face in the hereafter, after we die. So, to determine whether you go to Jannah, paradise, or not. And this is the opposite word of Nar. Jannah. Jannah. Which means the paradise. The paradise is what all Muslims are seeking from all this worshipping and from all this life. We all seek to go to Jannah. Because it has all the desires we need. Everything you want is in Jannah. And everything you fear is in Nar. Jannah and Nar were mentioned in the Holy Quran many, many times. Because Allah all the time is threatening and telling Muslim peoples to take care not to do things to make them near Nar and far from Jannah. And also is encouraging them to do the every good things to make them go in Jannah and avoid getting into Jahannam or Nar. The other word we're having today which is related to this is Sharm. Sharm means evil or bad. Everything bad you do is called Sharm, which has another meaning but it needs you to understand Arabic that some Muslims are calling Shar or the result of Shar with the word Sayyat. Means Sayyat, singular, Sayyat Jannah. And you will find this word mentioned a lot in Quran. So whatever you do, we have two angels, they write whatever you do in order to see it in the hereafter, after you die in the resurrection day. What's written in the bad? page of your actions is called Sayyat and on the opposite of Sayyat we have the word Hasanat plural and the singular Hasana Hasanat Hasana and this is written in the right page of your daily reported book which Allah will show you in the day of, of the resurrection so whatever you do something good it's called Hasana and it's mentioned a lot in Quran. So everyone is trying to make as much hasanat as he can and to avoid writing for himself as much sayyat as he can. Okay, hasanat and sayyat, as you said, are coming from the bad thing which called shar and the good thing in Arabic which called khair. Khair in Arabic means good. Sometimes means charity. It's a very wide word. So many people use this word even in the greetings every day. Some people they say Sabah al Khair or Masa al Khair means good morning or good evening. That's called good. So everything good you do is translated into hasanat, and everything sharr you do is translated into sayyat. Or in another way, good things resulted in hasanat, and bad things resulted in sayyat. And both of them are written in your book. Thank you. I hope I could be of a benefit and assistance for you. And I hope the words I gave you today were useful and you could clarify some unknown ideas about Islam. If you found this video useful, don't hesitate to share and to like and to subscribe and to tell other people about Islam. It could be your way to Jannah. Until we meet in another time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.